Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. I've been wanting to make a wagon wheel wreath for a really long time, and I know that Dollar Tree carries a wire form, but I wanted mine to be wood. So I'm using a 12 inch embroidery hoop, and I'm going to use both of the hoops for this one, and some of these six inch dowels from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to have to cut these down as well and I thought I would give these dog nail trimmers a try. I've seen a few people say that these cut dowels and because they're a rounded edge it's really easy to do so. I didn't find it so easy. Maybe I'm doing it wrong but I think these dowels are just a little too thick for that so I did switch over to my side cutters to finish the job. I'm using just a tiny little dot of hot glue on the end of the dowel to attach it to the embroidery hoop. I don't want a whole lot of glue seeping out because I want to be staining this later and the glue will of course not take the stain. Once I have them all together, I'm going to take this four inch wood round that I did pick up at the Dollar Tree in a pack of three, I believe. And I'm going to just measure to make sure that I have it in the right spot. And then I'm going to use hot glue to glue all of this down really well. Once that glue has dried, I can flip it over and add this other smaller piece of wood round, also came from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm set to start staining, and I think so far my wagon wheel looks pretty cool. To stain the wagon wheel, I'm using Dark Walnuts Gel Stain, and I'm diluting it a little bit with water because I want it to be absorbed right into the wood of the dowels and the embroidery hoop. I'm using these leaves that came off of a bush from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just on the back side of them paint them with my burnt orange paint. Now this is a honey brown color that comes from Americana and I think it's just the perfect color to mimic the underside of magnolia leaves. So each of these is going to get one good coat. Once those are dry I'm going to now paint the front just with some hunter green acrylic paint. I do have a little bit of talc in here to make it more of a chalk paint so I only need to do one coat. But you can see that with this color on the front and that orange color on the back they're turning into magnolia leaves. True magnolia leaves have a bit of a shine on the top of them so I am taking my matte Mod Podge and I'm going to give them a coat and this is just going to shine them up just a little bit to make them look like they are real magnolia leaves. Now that everything is dry it's time to assemble the magnolia flowers, the leaves and some extra little greenery onto the wagon wheel. I think I'm going to be putting it all the way around the side so that's going to hide the little metal part and I'm taking the blossoms right off the stems so I can glue them right down to the dowels and to the embroidery hoop. I love these magnolias. I do get these from Michaels but I always make sure to get them at their 40% off or their coupon price. You can see here the leaves that are sitting on the side, they have a little bit of a shine, so they do look like magnolia leaves. I'm going to continue adding some leaves and some additional other greenery, a few other blossoms, and then this project is complete. Quintus is a company that specializes in consumer electronics and accessories. Their products range from a car vent mount, a monitor light, LED lights, to iPhone fast charging and charging cables. I was able to choose from a whole bunch of different products and I chose the monitor light bar. I do a lot of my video editing in the evening and not having a huge bright light on in top of me really makes a big difference. The light sits right on top of my monitor. You can see it right across there. And just with the touch of a button, the light turns on and illuminates my workspace. I really like being able to see what I'm doing and 
not having the bright light on is really helpful. It also has different types of lights, so different colors to help your eyes adjust to the type of daylight that you're in or nightlight as it were. And you can also adjust the brightness of the light. It simply clips onto the top of your monitor and has a weight on the back of it to balance the weight of the light. I thought at first it would fall, but it's been amazing. It connects to power with USB. There's a link for the Quintus products down in my description box, along with an 8% off discount that's valid until January 2023. Make sure you check out their website and see what other products they have to offer. I recycle a lot of my past projects and this is one that I did a couple of years ago. I like the blue on it. I'm going to continue with that theme but I'm going to paint the base of it and the roof with this Parisian gray chalk paint from Folk Art Home Decor line. I've got this pretty blue scrapbook paper that I'm going to just use a glue stick and apply it to the sides and the front and back of the birdhouse. Of course, I'm gonna to need to remove the little peg that is for the bird's little perch so I can put this on flat, but I'm gonna be using something else to replace the perch at the end anyway. Any of the excess, I'm just going to use my sharp craft knife just to trim it off. I don't want to do any sanding yet. I've got four of these giant wooden beads. They had already been painted white for a different project. I'm painting them with the same gray paint. And once they're dry, I'll glue them to the bottom of the birdhouse just to make it look like it's a bit of a riser. Since I'm sticking with a little bit of a blue theme here, I decided to take my sanding block and sand down a little bit of the gray paint to show some of the blue and take it all the way down to the original wood of the birdhouse too. Now that the beads are dry, I'm just using a generous amount of hot glue and putting them in each of the four corners of the base. I'm doing a little bit of a patchwork quilt kind of style for the roof. I'm taking different types of scrapbook paper that kind of work with the theme, some in gray, some in beige, and then there's a couple more other blue ones. And I'm just cutting different size pieces and I'm going to use my glue stick to just put them right onto the house. I'm going to just butt up the pieces together and then sand off the excess on the side. Using the sanding block and a downward motion, I'm just going to get off all of the excess paper and that will leave it with a nice clean edge, but also a little bit of a rustic edge. This is a key that I had in my stash, but it's not the right color, so I'm just giving it a quick coat of white spray paint. I'm using some of the mini solo wood flowers that I have in my stash and I'm going to just decorate a couple of the corners and then add some of that Dusty Miller to give it a little bit more of a green pop. I want to say I am very sad to know that the solo wood flowers company has decided to no longer ship internationally. Since I live in Canada, they consider that international, so I will no longer be able to purchase any of the solo wood flowers. I still have a link down in the description box for you, so feel free to continue to use that link if you're purchasing the Sola flowers. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my current subscribers. I really appreciate your support. It has helped me grow from nothing to something. If you are new to my channel and you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. For this project, I'm redoing this wannabe lantern. It's made from four of the Dollar Tree frames and I still have the glass inside of them. I'm using my Weld Bond glue, which is my favorite permanent glue, and these tiny little wooden beads and I'm going to cover the top with the beads all the way around. 
This glue has about a five minute working window until it starts to dry. So it's a perfect amount of time for me to get all of the beads across the top. Originally, when I built this so-called lantern, I had hot glued the glass panes back into it. So now I'm just pushing very gently and making sure that I don't break it, getting the hot glue to release from either the glass or from the frame. Now that the glass is out, it's going to be very easy to paint all of the nooks and crannies. And once it's dry, I'll be able to glue the glass right back in. I am going to be using hot glue in the corners to put the glass back in, but I decided to use a little bit of the weld bond glue on the sides just to give it a little bit extra security. I wanted to create a riser or platform for the lantern slash cloche. So I needed something then to put these two pieces together. So I'm using these square dowels and I'm going to cut two the length of the sides and then two a little bit smaller for the other sides. That will be what I will be using then to hold all of this together. I'm just using my miter box and a hacksaw to cut through the dowels. I used hot glue to put all of the dowels in place. And once that was complete, I added four more of these really large wood beads and then I painted everything white. Now I'm just distressing it with my chip brush with some dark gray paint just to give it a weathered and old look. I'll do the same for the lantern. Using some additional small wooden beads, I put them on a piece of wire that I got at the dollar store and I painted them white as well. And now I'm going to use those as sort of the dome portion of the cloche. So I'm going to glue from corner to corner just using hot glue. And then I'll do the same on the other side, overlapping them and then gluing them all in place. I had to hold the beads in place for at least two minutes until the glue was completely set. Otherwise, it would just fall apart. But it's really secure and strong now that it's done, although I would never use the beads as a handle. The last thing I did was glue the two sets of beads together so they would be somewhat in the middle or as much in the middle as I can. And then it's time to dress it up. For my last project today, I'm going to upcycle this kind of cute but not so cute bunny that I got from Dollarama. The eyes are a little weird and the pink is just too pink. So I'm taking my favorite mushroom color, which is sort of a cross between beige and gray and a nice rough brush. And I'm going to just paint this and make sure I get into all of those little nooks and crannies because there's so much texture on this guy. Once he's done, I really liked how he turned out. I hope you enjoyed my projects today and got some inspiration to create some of your own spring home decor. It only takes a little bit of paint and some glue. Don't forget to go down to my description box and check out the link to the Quintus products. You will not be disappointed. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, I would appreciate a thumbs up a subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. Bye for now.